Well, I think the idea is that Titus wanted him to just go out front and make sure they don't walk into another ambush um, while they get close enough to see what's going on. No one in the party is particularly good at s sneaking. I think Lex might be good because he's small and has a decent dex and doesn't wear armor. Yeah. And my race gives me bonuses. What does your race give you? Uh, like plus two or plus four. If your racial bonus is plus four, that's just your size. And then it's plus two. Yeah, if it's plus two, that's a, a special thing on top of your size. Goblins, yeah. goblins get the goblinoid plus four and the size bonus. Which is why first level goblins have like a 12 stealth. Yeah, they get plus two on the plus four. So, yeah, I'm 12 as stealth, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm sure Darth is like only ne negative five or six. Titus might even be positive. Titus, are you alive? That doesn't sound convincing. Titus? He's sacrificing know, he's missing, children in the kitchen. He's missing three hit points. He might be hurting. No, what I mean is, like, is he actually around? Because he was the one who wanted to go scout. Hello? He's probably just out of range at the moment. The okay. question is, are you willing to do it? Because if you're not willing to do it, then it's not really relevant. Uh, no, I told him that I'm not willing to do it. Okay, so then you guys want to rest. Yeah. Okay, so you guys can uh, camp out and uh, figure out your watches. All right. Oh, I have a rope trick prepared. Awesome, we can sleep in a rope trick. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, okay, then that doesn't uh, require anything on my part. Uh, I will roll my fortitude save for crafting, but since I did not use my once a day ignore fortitude save, I'll use it on that. You know, it would have been a really good thing to do? Use it well, on your infection. I know, but I didn't realize I was infected, so I didn't use it. That's why I asked if I noticed that something is wrong. Yes, but I said roll a fortitude save when you touch the goo. <laughs> and if you were paying attention, I asked Darf multiple times how he was interacting with the goo because he was flying, so he wasn't walking in it, and it was. No, I understood, but I didn't outside. want to map it because, like, I was like, okay, well, Chua is like digging. Did he notice something's wrong? No. So, like, why would he use this? Nope. Totally fair. Okay, if so you would tell me I'm feeling ill, then I would have used it. Yeah, you. the way that the uh, infection spreads is because it goes after your mind first. It uh, doesn't give you any nauseous side effects. It doesn't start spreading throughout your body until it has dominated your mind. Okay. Even more insidious, there's no clues. Okay, so you rest for the night. In the morning, you continue on to the Goblin Fort. Um, you can give me a, a survival check to find it. We'll get an assist thing. Oh, Darf nailed it. Okay, never mind. Out of the park with the Darf. Trying to make up for those two nat ones in a row. Yeah, that was pretty brutal. Okay. 
just trying to find the description. Okay, so this is a small goblin outpost, uh, mostly a trading post. So as you uh, approach it to the forest, you can see that um, it is well concealed in the forest, but they have like almost like campground like spots around the uh, the settlement. Uh, looks like each is set up to be like a little marketplace. Um, isn't much here to check out. Doesn't look like much from the outside, and strangers are not allowed inside. But the frail looking outer wall is just a disguise. On closer inspection, it is quite obvious. The palisade conceals further defenses. Uh, it has a broad, flat roof which hangs over the perimeter of the fort, uh, about five feet. There are two opposing uh, gates, north and south, which form the outer section of the barbican um, and quickly reveal how thick the walls are. So as you come up, it is, it looks like a pretty big fort, um, but it basically just looks like a giant block of like moss and dirt and sticks in the forest. Has a gate on the north side and a gate on the south side, but uh, you do not see anyone anywhere around it. What do the walls look like they're made out of? The walls appear to be a wooden palisade. And it seems deserted. Yeah, the, it looks like there used to be a lot of activity around here. Um, but there doesn't seem to be anyone in the vicinity at the moment. Like I said, there's like a bunch of... There's like a... The, the fort in the center and maybe 20 foot radius around it is cleared. And then there's like a ring of trees, probably 20 or 30 feet uh, thick with trails through it. They go out to all these like little pods. So it kind of looks like a an aquatic uh, city where it's just these little bubbles all around it. But there doesn't um, appear to be anybody in any of them. Well, might as well investigate, I suppose. Be sneaking around. Stealth check. Uh, yeah, I'll... While sneaking around, I'll fly a bit closer to see if I either sense any aberrations in the vicinity or if anything looks suspicious. Okay. Uh, Ping tells you that he cannot uh, sense any aberrations. Okay. Uh, I'll return to the party and say, well, don't detect any aberrations there. So it seems... Well, I assume he didn't detect any goblins either. Otherwise, he would probably tell me. Um, no, he does not detect anything. Okay, so I'll inform the party that this seems to be deserted. You want to give me a perception check, Joe? Yes. Um, 
Actually, before I go in there scouting, I'll use my eyes of the overall, and then I'll give a perception check. How close are you getting? Uh, well, since I need to be within 30 feet of detecting something, then I'll like scout through. No, that's fair. I just wanted to confirm you were getting that close. I didn't even think about the fact that you had to get that close anyway. Yep. Okay. Um, as you move up, um, you notice underneath the uh, overhang, it's kind of like an eaves trough, and it hangs down just far enough that it conceals the arrow slits that are along the top of the fort. It appears mm -hmm. to be set up to fire down. So from above, as you circle around, it kind of looks natural. Like a dragon probably wouldn't be fooled by it flying overhead, but um, any, anything else flying over would just think that it's a giant mound of dirt or whatever. Okay. A little but hill in the forest. But the slits are currently unoccupied. Uh, you do not see anything, no. Okay, like I'll land close to one of them but from above to extend my blind sight if something is like hiding behind the slit you're gonna approach closer than 30 feet uh yeah let's approach to like 20 feet so i have blind sense 60 right so i should also like sense if something is there yeah but obstructions would block that Okay, so then let's approach 20 to extend mine sight. Okay. Um, as you move up, um, you can give me another perception check. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, you notice something moving inside or hear something. You don't really get a good look at it. Okay. But as you fly by, you notice these arrow slits are very deep. Huh. The wooden palisade around it is basically just like a log has been cut out of uh, the palisade to make a hole and then there's like a very narrow slit that goes in from there mm -hmm. but it goes you have really good dark vision so you should be able to see without any difficulty it goes back about 10 feet oh wow okay um it appears to be packed earth on the other side of the palisade mm -hmm. so there is something there so if I land on top of the palisade, then I'm not seen from the arrow slits, right? Uh, from those arrow slits, yep. Okay, so I will land on top. And then I will carefully crawl close to the arrow slit from above, but not, like, not in front of the arrow slit. Okay, you want to give me a perception check? Okay. Low. Nice. I am trying to extend the mine side though into the arrow slit. Like that's the idea. No, no, I understand what you're trying to do. It's just because the arrow slit blocks or because the dirt blocks the mine site, you basically have a sliver going inside before it expands and it's got to go back 10 feet. So you're not going to have much of a radius on the inside uh, to check around. Um, as you are... Uh, Moving across the roof, uh, you can roll a reflex save. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, the miscellaneous uh, grasses and vines and stuff that cover the top of the, uh, the fort start to writhe and attack you. Okay, I'll fuck off and retreat back to the party. Um, I will inform them of the following. So, 
The fort mostly seems deserted. There are hidden arrow slits on the palisade. They go really deep. There is definitely something moving there. And the wall is trapped. With some magic. Does it lead deeper in? Well, the arrow slits were like 10 feet in. So this is just the outskirts of the fort? Well, I investigated the wall. The fort itself, like, I mean, I flew around between these strange buildings that were there. I didn't detect anything, so... Um... But the walls seem to be manned. Is there any indication or reasonableness that the goblins would be underground under the fort? Or does is there a cave system? Like, is it connected to... A mountain or hillside or anything that might let us believe that they're underground or it's fully deserted uh you can roll a knowledge nature on that nice uh based on the layout of the area um and the size of this fort uh, you would have to assume that a fair amount of the occupants live beneath the fort. Since there's no real dwellings on the surface. Makes sense. Mm. Well, we're going to have to go through to find out where they went anyway. Unless... We want to look at the main gate and see if we can see any tracks. But if not, we're just going to have to make our way underground. Unless someone else has a better idea or doesn't agree. I mean, I think so. Darf has a borrow speed, and unlike mine, he's like decent size. So he could maybe make us a shortcut. Can you leave a tunnel, Darf? I was just looking that up. Um, according to the rules, no. Oh, well. That just means it would take him a lot longer to do it. A lot of creatures, uh, when they burrow, they actually leave a tunnel behind intentionally. But as long as he can dig, he could do the tunneling aspect. You guys just have to move all the dirt out of the way. So okay. it would be a time-consuming venture, depending upon how far you wanted to tunnel, how far down you wanted to go. Um, you guys are a fair distance from the mountains here, so you probably have a decent amount of, uh, for, of, uh, topsoil and dirt and whatnot to go through. Uh, what happened? I just moved to the uh -huh. map layer so I could oh, measure okay. how far in, away from the mountains you are. There is another option. I could try to teleport us across the palisade. Yeah, but you don't know what's on the other side. That is true. Yeah, it's about 35 miles from the mountain, so you would have a decent amount of, uh, of dirt underneath you could tunnel through. I'd say it's up to Dorf if he wants to do that. Because um, if it's abandoned, we just have to deal with the magic traps. 
So I mean, it's not abandoned. There are people in the palisade. There are people in the palisade. Yes. Yeah, he heard at least something moving on the inside. But he has such a ridiculous stealth check that it's hard for anyone to notice him. Only two functions of a good scout, high stealth and high perception. And then he rolls a one. Um... Let's deduce it logically. So there are probably aberrations by this point, right? Honestly, I'm just at the point of just brute forcing the matter, but... I'm fine with that. Because, again, there are probably aberrations. So we saw how infectious the dragon was, so we probably need to get rid of the enemy. Because the pal the the main defense is the the vines and the arrow slits is all we saw. That's what I saw so far. So I mean, arrows from a goblin like it's not like it's the Vodkin arrows which are gonna fuck us up. Um, I'm not terribly worried about these arrows. And we all have ways to deal with it, so. And also use artillery. Yeah, unless you have artillery. I don't have artillery. Um, I could have prepared artillery. Oh, like a long-range magic. Okay, I thought he said a pillory. I was like, what are you going to use a pillory? No, no, artillery. Yeah, I'm I'm on the I'm honestly on team just brute force the the attack. I'm cool either way. Alex, you're the artillery. Slits, like with that palisade or is it like complete like you have to go through it? Like you can't fly over it or anything? No, well, I can the, the fort has a roof on it. Oh. oh. Okay. Said that. It's, it's from above, it just looks like a mound. Okay, then yeah. Um, at this point, just breaking down what we need to. Alex, so... do you have any magic to blow up the port? And your orb of fire. What were you saying, Darth? I guess, why, why do we think they're aberrations? Because a whole bunch of goblins were coming from here and infecting people. So they would probably start with infecting everyone in the fort. Because otherwise, like, it will be defended and guarded against them. So, like, if I were in aberration, I would first of all take over this thing. If I started here. And the, the aberration goblins are so common, even the... People in H8 know about them. All right. And the shepherd's boy told you that the goblins had a fort in the forest and that it was below the fort. It was below the fort. Yep. Uh, the rift was below the fort, I believe. So let's attack the fort. Yeah, he drew the spirally thing on the paper or on the ground or wherever he drew it. So, do we buff an attack? Um, what do you feel, Darth? Because it's really up to you. If you want to spend the time to make a burrow underneath, we can do that. Otherwise, it might just be easier to just take the hits and attack. Well, I guess the question is, how do we plan to get inside of it? Well, I assume the palisade is like a door or something. Like, how does it block us? 
the the gate on the north and the south side are uh, made of heavy wooden timbers. Um, you really can't tell much beyond that because they're uh, very well fitted together. You can't see anything beyond that point, so you don't really have any information on what's behind the door. So are you just looking to break it down with swords, or...? Well... I had a hammer, but that doesn't really answer that question. You don't have a battering ram. Um... I have fire. That's a fair point. Can we just light the? Can you light the place on fire? Well, I have like energy burst fire that I could use, that will cause a decent amount of fire damage. I assume wooden door is susceptible to fire damage, so. Yeah, let's. I guess you want to try that, just still see if you can catch... Actually, one second, I have a really crazy idea. One moment, let me check this spell I have, that I never used, even though it's amazing. Uh, time hop. To How large is the door? Uh, the door is like 10 by 10. Nice. For two additional points spent, you can affect a creature one size category larger. Okay, so... A creature? Uh, let's see if it is limited to creature or one object. Nice. It's a one medium or small creature or one object weighing 300 LD or less. How much does a door weight? How much or, does a door weigh? Yeah. Uh, I have a I have an option. I finally get to use. Which is? Yeah. I can cast Sands of Time. It will rapidly age an object. Oh. Yeah, but how much is it aged by? And where'd you get Sands uh, of Time from? It's part of my astral bloodline. Oh, okay. Uh, cast on an object, contract, or undead creature. It takes 3d6 points of damage, plus 1 per caster level, max of plus 15. As time, weather, you, uh, as time, weather corrodes it. That is still less effective than just causing it fire damage. One second, let's figure out if I can just time hop the door. Uh, the, the disadvantage is that this is range close, so we'll still need to fight through the palisade, but then I can just poof the door away for a few rounds. Well, what's the... What's the, the range on the Sands of Time? Unfortunately, it's touch. Hmm. For a reinforced door, how many times did you need to cast that? Uh, for example, I can only cast it once. Oh. Guys, again, if we get close enough and we defeated the Palisade guards, I can just time hold the door. Okay. So a two by four um, weighs about eight pounds, depending upon the type of wood it is. It can be up to thirty-four pounds. I'm like thirty-four pound two by four. That's pretty in intense. Um, so it would be fifty percent bigger than that, and then another quarter on top of that. So there's 16, 20 pounds, and then it's 10 feet wide, which is 120, uh, which would be uh, 60. Holy shit. 60 times yes. 20. That's a lot. 1,200 pound door. Well, oh, fuck one second. Let's see how many points do I need for this shit. Ah, uh, this is. 305, two doubles, so 2 is 600, 
Oh no, I only need seven or nine points. But this is fine, I can still do it. Okay. So you can get to twelve hundred uh pounds? Uh with nine points, yes. And how, how close do you have to be to do that? Uh close range. So it's six times five thirty fifty five foot. Okay, so you can do that from the cover of the forest, if you want. Oh, really? Yeah, well, it's only like a 20-foot perimeter around the uh, the fort of uh, clearing. Okay, cool. Um, then, yeah, well, it will last 12 rounds, so... Okay, so you cast Time Hop on the door. Um, as an object, it doesn't get a save, right? Uh, will negates... I don't think a door see. has a will. Yeah, unattended non-magical objects usually don't get saves. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so you time hop the door away. Um, when the door disappears, uh, there is a dark uh, 10 by 10 tunnel that goes in about 10 feet and ends with another door. So we're on? Sorry, what did you say? I asked the party, do we run? We have 12 rounds before the door is back. Well, we can breach, right? Why not just take out? Like, is this the point where we have access to the guards now? Can we just take them out? No, this is just the barbican. The two doors that you stand in between while they shoot you with arrows and pour boiling oil on you. Okay, so we need both doors gone before we can run through. Need an I'll need another round for that. Okay. Like, we'll need to advance forward, get me in range of the second door, then I can time pop it away, then we can run for it. Well, it's mental, right? You could stealth and... and get rid of it, and then we run when they're both gone? They just saw a door disappear. They probably know something is on. Do they even have the ability to see you? No, it's not about me. They saw a door gone. Mm-hmm. So they're on alert right now. That's fine. Okay, my suggestion is we run forward, we like exchange fire for one round, and then we go through the second door when I make it disappear. Okay, so you guys are going to charge up to the fort? I mean, that, that's uh, my plan. Visibility first, but yeah. Sorry, what was that? I'll cast some visibility first, but yeah. Okay, for buffing, I cast schism. All right, I guess, uh, is that invisibility only for you, Titus? Uh, if you'd like one, I'll cast it on No, one. it's fine, I mean... I'll, I'll extend my schism. I'll, I'll be the guy who takes a lot, a lot of the arrows, it's fine. I can, I can cast it on you. I've, I've got a second, level takes spell a second spell. round to do that. That's all he's getting at. I, I'm, I'm more worried about Lex. Why are you worried about Lex? Because he heals me. I don't oh. want him getting stuck by an arrow that's got like poison on it and he falls asleep or some dumb shit. Yeah, I don't know if you have been paying attention to Lex's hit point total, but it hasn't moved in, like, four sessions. But I also don't use this spell level often, so I... Like, if Lex wants invisibility, too, I can do that. That's not a problem. Yeah, if you want to give it to me, I'll take it. Okay. Okay, so you're spending two of your rounds casting invisibility? Uh, three rounds. Me, Lex, and Darth. Okay. If I cast that and I will also cast Force Screen. Okay. People are buffing apparently. After I already did the time hop, it's fine. Well, mm. they didn't know what the outcome of the time hop was going to be. Fine. You said it's going to be 12 rounds. You could, in one of those rounds, take down the second door if you want. Can I re target it from here? I thought it's farther away. 
Well, it's only 10 feet further than the other door, so you can just move up to it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll just... The fort is 20 feet from the edge of the forest, uh, which means you said 55 feet you can cast from? So yes. you'd be 35 feet into the forest. You move up to 25 feet in the forest and cast it again. Okay, I will then sneak up a bit forward and cast the second time, hope on the third round of their battle. Okay, when the uh, the second door uh, drops, you can see clear through the uh, keep to the northern door, and uh, you don't see anything in your line of sight. It's just a 10-foot path through the center of the keep. We got nine minutes on this. The invisibility. Oh, Just okay. I, th I thought you were talking about the session. I was like, oh, I, th I think we're ending at 2.30 anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, fair. Charge forward. I think until we finish buffing, the door will come back. Just keep in mind, once you are inside and the door comes back, you're now trapped inside. Teleport. Yep. Assuming you have PSPs left at the end of all of this to teleport out. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Um, I wasn't expecting to get this far, so I didn't get the fort set up. So this is probably a good time to stop since we're coming up on uh, Chua's endpoint anyway. And we can pick up next time with the storming of the fort. Sounds good. It was a lot of fun. Yep. So just note everything you used in advance, and we'll do it next time. Cool. Okay. Um, so we'll take an hour break and come back for cause and effect at 3.30. You guys good with that? Good. Yeah, I've got to get food. Yeah, I gotta get shit done, too. Sounds good. Okay, I'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.